Before we start with architecture, Andreas would like to sort of give a little quick let me boundary just, clamor. Let me just say a few words to you. Um, we will talk today about a very exciting project that uh, Wolfram and Graft Architects and some other people, including me, are launching. It takes place in Africa, which is a magical place. Uh, the magic of this place can be expressed in a very um, symbolic way. Wolfram and I, we live in the same city. We have never met. The only way we met was uh, via Africa. Wolfram is an architect. I'm a lawyer. But uh, this challenging and aspiring and very beautiful uh, continent brought us together. And this is what we will talk about. But first, you'll start. I'll just give you a quick introduction of what our office does as green architecture. But of course, what we will talk about in the end is a miniature piece. It's almost the plankton of architecture, the one cell piece. It's a kiosk. I would like to sort of give you quickly an idea. Everybody knows Mr. Gerke von Gerken. We still have to sort of introduce ourselves in this world. So this is the reputation sort of show of five minutes, and then we'll go into our projects. <coughs> we have five, three offices, a lot of international projects. We also are, in a smaller scale, involved in a conversion of a Berlin airport. We won the urban planning competition of the Northern Rim for the Tempelhof Airport, which opened this weekend at its central sort of thing. We're developing a lot of uh, larger scale, high-rise projects around the world. Most of them are LEED certified in gold or platinum standards. LEED certification is in the uh, sort of international range of competing certificates, the best um, system that is actually out there so far. Just to give you quickly, we are scaling down from our large, larger scale projects. This is going to be the first LEED platinum and highest CASB um, certified project in Japan. Um, we won and are working on a conversion of uh, the Melnikov garage in Moscow to the Jewish, Russian Jewish Museum, also going to be a green project, although it is just an interior conversion of a landmark modern icon of Russian constructivism, and so forth. I want to just going to scale down. This is in Kuala Lumpur. So sustainable architecture is a very contextual problem because you're really dealing with environmental issues of uh, um, temperature, humidity, resources, extension and distances of resources to construction sites and so forth. This is uh, our latest projects for Hamburg, the International Building Exhibition that is hopefully also around when Tegel, uh, you know, when your project will come into its sort of critical mass point where also Hamburg will have its first real sustainable city development. This a lot of these projects have different focuses. This project, for example, generates much healthier air on the inside than on the outside. We have a, the, the entire building works as a huge filter, but also, and we're leading into, you know, also more the context areas where we don't have first world infrastructural powers, we don't have economic resources. So we're designing a lot of Adobe buildings for Africa right now. This is un going into construction and so forth for Africa. I'm scaling down so just that you see what our projects and our interior sort of scaling is. So we, architecture is not only about urban plans, it kills down to product design scale and to really find a sustainable platform, a sustainable method of design within these scales is what our office is, tries to achieve. Two minutes, maybe a lo lot of you guys know that, but architects are dealing with problems and are designing um, solutions for problems that are really attached to the biggest resource user of, of the planet. Buildings are everywhere. We all want buildings. We want buildings that have a certain standard. We, you know, we are, so there's a mechanical component and an energy component to buildings. We are obviously trying to make buildings and the use of their energy sources a lot smarter. And we're facing a, a huge demographic change where humans are moving to city centers. So the explosion of mega cities, this is 2025, um, the prognosis of ISOCAR, but pretty much every sort of database will tell you that we are by now half the world population lives in, in cities. This will go to 75% within the next 15 years. Important just is to say buildings, 43% compared to industry and transportations are 43% of the carbon footprint of the planet is done is created through buildings. Energy consumption is 48%, pretty much, even if it's just the diagram of the of some certain US sources. But in the first world, we're almost talking about 50% uses of energy 
in buildings comp compared to transportation. So we're really talking about that, Hefron Gerkan, our profession, you as investors, when we turn your interest into envelopes and buildings, we're talking about something that really has affected cli climate change and global warming. So therefore needs to get smarter, needs to change. All we're seeing is uh, green has become a fashion. Green branding is undecipherable. We're pretty much now not knowing exactly in product or architecture ranges what is really green. So we're really about a Babylonian mixture of certificates that I was talking about. So these are the, all the ones that are kind of out there. These are the five ones that all offices that try to act globally, some have to learn, kind of need to know. You know, you have the five fluent and five languages. So the only thing we're saying is it's happening, let's change our plan. We're going to show two projects. One is our project. I would like to show just one thing that we just finished because it's a campaign. And it's really about building an architectural product, energy product campaign. And the, um, our office recently marked its fourth year anniversary. This is a book we just published about a disaster relief opportunity. A lot of times when you talk about architecture in cities and urban fabrics, only violent change gives you the potential to really install a, gr a, a really complex idea in a very sort of complex manner. Either you have a project like Meinert von Gerkan, where you can go back and have a potential of inner city space, or you talk about war zones, disaster zones, etc. In this case, we're talking about a natural disaster that allowed us to sort of really um, change the city component house into a new thing. 300,000 houses needed to be rebuilt for New Orleans. Half of the city's inhabit inhabitants have not moved back to New Orleans since five years. So this down on the left is the diaspora of the, of the uh, New Orleans exodus of that particular catastrophe. So what we're talking, we're taking this one most uh, sort of mostly flooded and mostly destroyed urban area and are creating a campaign. Obviously, the recipe is always create some, get some media attention getters, Hollywood stars are perfect politicians that are not in power anymore, so can do what they kind of really feel they want to do. And create an architecture product that is affordable, sustainable, has good design, which is normally not the case. Most of these disaster relief, cheaper products are really not quality products. The German certificate of sustainability in architecture creates a social component and a component of beauty to be part. Everybody has a product, knows, they, there's a component of aestheticism that needs to happen. Create a bank, we created a private bank to finance uh, people who would not be able to do this. We have a technology, we created a big pool of architects with differently pliable ideas, contributed our own designs and are now in the process of building. This is just to give you an idea of our office, what we will show you and what we would like to have help for and what we would like to make you enthusiastic about, that we have done this on one scale before. And we have designed an interface tool. This was a huge two-month-long running media installation that was basically a public awareness fundraising tool. It was fundraising online $7 million at the time in um, two months for our projects. Just giving you an idea how we try to communicate.